Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is Hellblade 2 and it's one of the best looking games I've ever played. It runs on Unreal Engine 5 and if you have a high end system you can experience the full extent of these beautiful graphics. To be honest it still looks good at low. On an i9 and RTX 4070 Super it runs with over 60 FPS at the highest settings. If I was creating a guide on how to improve the visuals from a personal perspective of course then I might suggest removing the black bars via INI tweaks. This is going to knock a little off the FPS, well quite a bit actually, but I mean I paid for the whole monitor so I want to use it, right? That said, because I want to see how well this runs on lower end hardware, we need to leave the letterbox mode enabled. I will however be disabling chromatic aberration and depth of field as my eyeballs simply cannot tolerate either. I think doing this may have actually given us a tiny boost to performance, maybe like 1 FPS or something, according to the real time stats. Maybe it's just my imagination. I really like that we can see performance metrics in the menu and how each setting impacts frame rate. Now what I quickly established from my time with the i9 and 4070 Super was that going any higher than native 1080p was a big no-no if I wanted to maintain at least 60 FPS. This is where I started to think about lower end hardware. Yeah, this system does a good job, but there are still some dips and drops here and there. They may only be to the mid or high 60s, but what if we were using something a lot weaker? Say the weakest combination of parts I currently own. Yes, this Potato PC features a Pentium G7400 2-core CPU, 8GB of DDR4-2400MHz RAM, in dual channel of course, and an RX6300 2GB graphics card. I built it to see how modern low-end specs would hold up in modern and upcoming games, and how long for. Now the good news is that the game actually started, I hadn't seen the compiling shader screen before but I'd have plenty of time to look at it now. After about 30 minutes we were at the main menu and our Pentium CPU and 2GB GPU were ready to get to work. Though the game had other ideas. On the second attempt I realised that I'd left the graphics preset at high and this meant that we saw about 1fps. Just changing the preset to low took about 10 minutes, so thanks to the power of editing, I cut this footage for the sake of your sanity. But what a fool I was to think lowering the graphics actually mattered. Here is how the game ran at native 720p with the lowest settings. This isn't a screenshot by the way, we are just waiting for the next frame to load. Any time now? Maybe not. 800 by 600 next and it's more of the same. I've never played a game with a negative frame rate before but here we are. At first I thought this was a GPU issue, maybe RAM, so I switched to the GTX 1630, another entry level card, but one with 4GB of VRAM. I also upped the system RAM to 16GB of dual channel 2666MHz DDR4. This didn't help though and after a couple of fatal errors and reloads, I came to the conclusion that the 2 core 4 thread Pentium was probably to blame. With the newfound knowledge that my original Potato GPU could run the game after all, I put it back in the system, albeit with an i3-12300 instead, which has 4 cores and 8 threads. I also kept the 16GB of RAM. Immediately, everything felt snappier, navigating the main menu didn't crash the game, and we were actually getting at least 0 FPS, which is always helpful if you want to actually play your games. I kicked off with 720p resolution and FSR 3 ultra performance. I mean it's not great, but we are getting double digits, right? Over 10 FPS in fact. That's an infinitely better figure percentage wise over what we were getting before. Could Intel XESS do any better? Well it looks a bit nicer but overall performance is about the same and the visuals are still pretty much destroyed. I then went with TSR, adaptive resolution and a target of 60fps to see what would happen. Maybe if we left the game to dynamically adjust things we'd get a better result. Or maybe not. I mean it looks fine but it seems to be targeting 6 instead of 60. Before I moved onto more sensible hardware in the hopes of actually hitting at least 30 FPS I thought we may as well give 800 by 600 resolution a chance. Now to do this I set the res at the desktop before jumping back into the game and oh it's our old friend Mr Error. 
Not to be dissuaded, and considering I had already got massive eye strain induced headaches from all the 8 pixels on screen, I persevered, but nothing I did really helped. Whether it was TSR, XESS or FSR3, the frame rate didn't really improve. Sure it was better than it was at a decimated 720p, but we couldn't break through the 20fps barrier. And by this point I had square eyeballs. The game even had the audacity to ask me what I could see. What can you see? Mate, I can't even tell what's grass and what's sky. There's like six pixels now. So as much fun as it is messing around with super low settings, I think we conclude that a dual core CPU and 8GB of RAM will pretty much cause the game to freeze, and on the other hand, our 2GB Radeon GPU isn't going to cut it. With that in mind, I'm going to go back to the GTX 1630 once again in the hopes that we'll have found a new low-end combo capable of at least 30 FPS in Hellblade 2. We've got the i3 in the system and we've still got the 16 gigs of RAM, so I'm hoping that the 1630 will do a lot better now. Now for the settings we want 720p but not just 720p set within the game. We need to set the Windows desktop res to 720p first before getting into the game for best performance. From here we'll need FSR 3 set to performance, not ultra performance, just regular performance mode. And here we have it. It still looks pretty bad, I've got to be honest, but the i3-12300 and GTX 1630 4GB can manage 30fps in Hellblade 2, albeit with some hefty sacrifices. Hmm, maybe performance mode was a mistake. Yeah, ultra performance is definitely best. It is kind of playable, but realistically most of you watching probably won't be happy with the graphics in full on Vaseline mode. To finalise, finally, let's see what it takes to actually get a decent experience at 1080p, perhaps with some upscaling enabled. I've switched to one of the weakest 30 series GPUs for this test, the 8GB RTX 3050. This is of course the older version of the card and not the modern 6GB variant. Now the best options here I feel include DLSS set to balanced while retaining the low settings. This will actually give us at least 60fps a lot of the time but because there will be moments of slowdown and particularly intensive scenes which will cause dips to the mid 40s, I'd suggest keeping things as they are. There's a nice balance between visuals and graphics here and as I said before, the game still looks really good at low. This makes a nice change from the utterly destroyed visuals we've been using up until now. If you want to enjoy this game and enjoy it properly then it seems a modern quad core 8 thread CPU is fine, though something equal or better than an RTX 3050 is necessary as far as graphics cards are concerned. 16 gigabytes of RAM also seems okay. But I mean there we are, we've absolutely decimated some of the best graphics I've seen, well, ever, but also found how low we could go while maintaining sensible settings and visuals too. I'm absolutely exhausted, I need to massage my eyes or something. But let me know how this game runs on your system. Does it run well? What sacrifices do you have to make? Do you need to absolutely destroy the visuals like we have today? I'd love to hear all your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.